Diane O'Dell of Jackson, Tennessee, has lived in an iron lung longer than anyone still alive today. She owes her life to this device and has relied on it since contracting polio at the age of three in 1950. And we were catching June bugs and putting them on strings, letting them fly around our heads. And I told her I didn't feel good, I was going to go lay down. I was up all night with a headache and my legs hurting. By morning, I could not walk. Soon, she couldn't breathe and was put in an iron lung. As a child in the 50s living in an iron lung, Diane had lots of company, as thousands of other children were in the same situation in hospitals from coast to coast. They would push our iron lungs close together so we could play together. And we, our playing together consisted of our spitting at each other because we couldn't do anything else. Doctors working in those hospitals still recall the constant hum of all those iron lungs operating simultaneously. On the third floor of Municipal Hospital, there was a ward filled with iron lungs, and the noise was deafening, and I hated to go up there because it was depressing. You might think that after all these years, technology would have evolved to present Diane with other options. For other people, there are other solutions. There are chest respirators that fit on your chest, but that's for people who have a straight spine. I don't. My spine is curved, like an S. 